Is there anything I can do if my wife loves me but doesn't desire me is the title of this video. My name is Paul Friedman. I'm the founder of the Marriage Foundation. I used to be a divorce mediator. I've seen it all. That was over 22 years ago. And now we've been helping individuals, mostly individuals, because we have this amazing course for men and another one for women when the marriage, usually our clients are people whose marriages are really in trouble. And they've tried Western psychology, couples counseling and so forth. It doesn't work. And I know it doesn't work because when I started doing all this, it was because I had a client, a couple, who wanted me to save their marriage instead of dissolve it. And what I did was the first step was to talk to my psychological friends, the, the ones who were doing this for a living. Because I didn't realize that most of their clients failed. I only got the ones who were in so much trouble that, you know, I knew that divorce at that time, I thought I believed in divorce. I've changed my mind about that completely. When I dug into marriage and I realized what marriage is all about, I realized that hardly any marriages should end up in divorce. Hardly any marriages should end up like yours is now, where you say your wife loves you. There's no doubt in my mind she loves you, but she doesn't desire you. There's a disconnect there, isn't there? It's like, if she loves me, you have to be asking the question, why doesn't she want to please me? She doesn't have to desire you to please you. She could want to please you because she loves you. And there's so much junk in the world today that we get confused and we lose sight of the obvious. And that's really what it boils down to. She has been mind manipulated along with virtually everyone else in the world about what marriage is about, about what taking care of our spouse is all about. Now you ask, what can you do about it? If that's where she's at. So I'm here to tell you that there is something you can do about it. What you can do about it is you could learn how to be married yourself. You don't have to ask her, would you take this course with me? No, you could learn all by yourself and it may be just one of my books is enough. It could be just being a subscriber to these videos is enough. You start to get it really because it's a whole different way of looking at marriage and you're, you'll change. You'll change. You see, we get married in order to be happy. Your wife got married in order to be happy, not just happy, but happier every single day of your lives. You also got married to experience love. Deep, real love, not fleeting emotional love, but the real McCoy that, that you, it just overwhelms your mind. It overwhelms you because it's real. It's from the soul. What happened? What happened? I could tell you what happened. <laughs> As a matter of fact, what happens is, and it goes back to, I've identified three killers of marriages. There's actually four. And the number one killer is I call it over familiarity. And what it means is you start treating each other like you treat a sibling. You just expect them to always be there. You don't have any, any desire to really sweep them off their feet. And I'm talking about you. You don't have a desire to sweep your wife off her feet to make her feel like the queen that you told her you would make her feel like when you got married. No, you settle into these routines that are totally mundane. Your marriage isn't fulfilling. Clearly it's not fulfilling, but you're not the only one. Almost all marriages are not fulfilling. Look, we have a 50% plus divorce rate. Well, how many couples do you think who are not divorced are happily married? I'm not talking about the ones who say they are, but are really happily married. It's, it's no one knows how to be married. Not many. Most people endure their marriages and that's where you are now too. And you can change that completely. You have free will. 
you now have an idea that, yeah, I am supposed to be happy. Yeah, I have not been taking care of my wife the way I should. And you can really change the dynamic of your marriage all by yourself. You know, I started this a long time ago and I was doing this in San Diego. I was a divorce mediator there. And when I rounded up my first group of marriage counselors, the ones who are psychologists, I went through over a hundred before I found the ones who I liked. And I asked them a simple question even before I spoke to them the first time. I didn't do it personally, I had someone do it. Question was, are you a soul or do you have a soul? It's a deep question. And if you're anybody, you gotta think about that one. Well, the right answer is very simple. I am a soul. I don't have a soul, I am one. Otherwise, who am I? I'm a soul, but I have a mind and I have a body. And so I wanted the deep thinkers. By the way, we're training now again. This time it's online. So if you're a therapist or if you're clergy or if you just work with couples as a, uh, a relationship advisor or consultant, you might want to take the course, go to our website, and we can help you become a marriage counselor, but a good one, a TMF marriage counselor. You don't have to have a background in psychology. It actually would work against you. One of my favorite counselors who work for the foundation, he's passed away. He also taught therapy at, what was it, Phoenix uh, College. And he said, you know, Paul, we got to, we got to get the ones who are just starting out because a lot of them are ruined now. And as good a people as they are, they're not receptive to these ideas. They're totally invested in what they're doing, even though it doesn't work. And he acknowledged that. So we're training now, but what can you do? Really? That's the question. Well, you got to completely stop being an a-hole because at times you are, you're probably tough with her. Sometimes you argue with her, you're mean to her and you're supposed to be her protector. And you got to focus instead, you know, don't worry about why you behave the way you do. We're not psychologists. Instead, stop yourself before what comes out of your mouth doesn't. Don't let anything out of your mouth until you think. Is what I'm about to say going to make my wife feel loved? Is she going to know I love her by what I'm about to say? And you know what? Even the most mundane, insignificant things can be packaged in love, can't they? You can do this. And that's what you do. You got to change the dynamic of your marriage because yes, she still loves you, but she's not attracted to you physically because your marriage has taken on a mundane quality. It hasn't, hasn't gone deep. And, and that's the problem because if she's really feeling that love, she's going to want to connect with you physically too. It just makes sense, doesn't it? So I'm not going to say she's falling out of love with you, but she's accepted and you've accepted marriage as it is. And God, don't do that. Really don't do that. We've proven now for over 20 years that you can have a phenomenal marriage. You don't have to be special. You don't have to do something amazing, but you have to learn how. Look, if I, when you were 16, if I handed you the keys to a Ferrari and you were just maybe going to driving school, maybe, not quite, and you got behind the wheel and I showed you how to start it, <laughs> it, probably within five seconds, you'd have that sucker wrapped around a tree. Well, marriage is high performance. It's an amazing vehicle, but we don't learn. You haven't learned. You got to learn. So at the minimum, subscribe to the channel, but that's bare minimum. Really? get one of my books, but if you really want to do this right, get the course for men and really learn how to be married and become who she wants to be intimate with.
Now, I, I think I've covered it. I'm Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation. Like the video, please. And don't forget to leave a comment if you wish. And other than that, I hope to see you again. God bless you. Thank you. Take care.